Welcome to Your Next Level Now with your host, Bob Donnell. As a human behaviorist, Bob has helped people from every walk of life reach their next level both personally and professionally. Whether a celebrity, professional athlete, or entrepreneur, Bob has helped them align their behavior with their desired result in their life and career. This is Your Next Level Now with Bob Donnell. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Next Level by Association. Welcome to Your Next Level Now. Um, hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you guys did something that was productive. But more than productive, even, even I always say it's not good to be busy. It's good to be productive. But even more than productive is something that's meaningful. And so what did you do this week that was meaningful this, this weekend? Um, was it something personally? Was it something professionally? Uh, was it something for self-help, self-care? Uh, what was that? And uh, feel free to share it in the comments. And then um, we'll go back and review and make, make comments back, respond. Today, we have a really um, an interesting situation. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some background. Some of you guys know the story because I've shared it a little bit from time to time. But um, we're going to have you a little more details. So the gentleman on my left, my left, your right, is my brother, Rick McConnell. And um, he, we became brothers when I was in fifth grade. I think we've backed around it to a ninth. He was in ninth grade at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom married his dad. And they lived in Texas. We lived in California. Mom and I moved to California to, to be with uh, her husband. And then shortly thereafter, his four kids uh, came to live with us. And so we were all together. But that lasted for only a little over a year, and then they were divorced. So um, Rick and I were technically uh, in the same house for a year. Then we moved back to California. They moved on with their lives. Rick and I did not reconnect until I was in 10th grade, and uh, he was in Amarillo with a radio station, KWAS. I was in uh, Lubbock, Texas, going to high school, my 10th grade year, and we reconnected, but then we didn't reconnect again for, you know, 20 years or something. It was crazy. And uh, I happen to remember the radio station they used to work at. So I called and I say, hey, is Rick McConnell still working there? And they go, no, he doesn't work here anymore. I said, well, <laughs> do you know where he went to? They go, well, yeah, he, uh, he happens to, I think he took a job at a radio station in Colorado mm -hmm. Springs. I go, I live in Colorado Springs. What are the odds? So Rick and I reconnected there. And then um, we, you know, again, we went our ways and things like that. And we stayed in touch, um, but rarely until Facebook came along. And then it was really easy to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really funny. So then um, fast forward all these years, Rick and I have, you know, stayed in touch. Um, I see that, well, I think it was, I think I was on Facebook, had made a comment on Rick's post or something like that. And Lori, Lori McNamara, who you're going to meet right here, Lori says, um, hey, how do you guys know each other on Facebook? We're like, we're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it was so funny because as, as time went on, uh, last year, I see Rick's posting a picture and I'm like, wait, isn't that like San Luis Obispo or Avila or something? And then he goes, yeah, I'm up here visiting. I said, I live here. And he goes, oh, my gosh. So we got together at dinner. While we're at dinner, he makes this comment and says, hey, I know that uh, like we're both friends with Lori McNamara. And I said, yeah, we are. He goes, how do you know her? I said, never met her in person. But what's happened was we became friends on Facebook. And we've just you know, stayed in the same circle. And he goes, oh, that's it. Really nothing else. Um, I think there was more to that question because fast forward a year, they're in a relationship and, um, and uh, they happen to be here visiting for a wedding. And so I get to meet Lori for the very first time in person. We've had a lot of interaction on Facebook, but never in person. And, uh, and I also get to see my brother. So uh, it really a cool experience, cool time. Um, and I, I'm just really grateful for the time that we get together. So thanks guys. Well, glad to be here, Bob. Yeah, that's fun. It's fun. Um, you I know, think, I, I think it was fun was that 
we knew each other for six, right. six seven yeah. years before I before ever, you ever met him. I ever met him. Like, and you didn't meet him through me. It was no. just you met, you already knew him. So right. it was really funny. So we're going to talk about how they met and all this other stuff. But it's really fun because um, part of both of their stories are incredible because they involve, they involve, they involve how God does things and um, how he does things. Um, that produced the absolute best results. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I'm recalling all these things that Rick and I, in, you know, when I was in fifth grade, how many things I remember. I'm like, how do I remember that? But I remember it because there was, uh, it was an, imp it was made an impression on me. Um, I remember things that Rick did. He wrote a song that I remember from before he ever met me. And, um, and it made an impression on me. I remember him, you know, doing things like out in the yard and, and building barometers and really following weather and things and becoming an entrepreneur and selling candy to the rest of us kids. <laughs> um, but it was just one of those things where he was only four years ahead, but he, he was a mentor. He was a great, great big brother to me. So it was a lot of fun. Um, so as, as Rick and, and Lori started sharing their story, um, I, I gotta ask, I gotta ask Lori to share, um, what has been the most meaningful, um, the most meaningful circumstance that you have encountered in your years? In my years? In your years. The most meaningful, yeah, the most meaningful circumstance. circumstance in my years. Um, one, gosh, there's been so many yeah. of how God uh has designed like our meet mm -hmm. was yeah. it was just i love seeing how all the little connections come yeah. together especially on facebook yeah. i think the meaningful part would be here i'm struggling through my life and you had your own mm -hmm. struggles and mm -hmm. how god put us together I, i'm still blown away by every little detail thinking that he's left me alone he's not here and he's like working it all out right um, it's those things that shock me how do you i mean you've you've been through some circumstances we're going to talk about those but how have you been able to keep your eyes focused and trusting that god is going to work all things together for the good um i haven't hmm. all the time trusted him i've been i've been fighting with him but um as i see the history of how he's still been in control yeah that's built my trust up but i haven't always been there i've been yeah First thinking, that, thinking he's not in control or thinking you're you're blowing it for me why why am i waiting what am i doing and, right you're supposed yeah. to god you're supposed to know yeah. what you're doing no, so trust no i'm always not trusting him it's funny you say that mm. but more and more i am as i watch him do yeah. these miraculous things like bringing rick into my life and putting me where he put me after i retired and thinking that he's left me but he hadn't yeah um thank you for sharing that truth because i think a lot of times when we watch people who seem to have it all together, Ooh, right? Yeah. Um, we go, well, sure, it's easy for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love the Bible verse that says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. I, it doesn't matter how much money you have, what kind of house you live in, car you drive, you're going to have some stuff. That's right. And um, so thank you for sharing that because I believe that that's, I think that more people watching can identify with that than that everything's perfect. Yeah. Oh, right. So, yeah. Don't you think, Rick? Mm -hmm. Yeah absolutely um oh, you got to acknowledge his voice okay <laughs> uh, you know he's always had this great voice but he's on radio like all around the globe on christian radio stations and stuff but he's a um just a, a great voice so thank you for yeah well that's what i've been doing uh, all my life uh, mostly christian radio but yeah. some uh rock radio and uh, work with country stations and mm -hmm. things like that so that's what i do yeah so what do you think, you know, you went through some stuff too, and we'll talk about that as well, but what do you think has helped you keep it all together, even when it wasn't all together? Uh, you just barely, sometimes uh, you you hang on by your fingernails, and a lot of people don't understand faith. Uh, it's a religious word, and people overuse it. It's used in uh, from churches uh, to Disney movies, and one of my granddaughters one time said, okay, what is this faith? What are you talking about? It's so overused. How old was she? And, uh, she's maybe, she was maybe eight. At, at the time. eight? Wow. She's, what exactly is faith? Mm. Uh, she was raised in church. Um, but the, the thing that helped me is uh, to understand this, 
God likes it when you believe him. He likes to be believed. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing in the Bible that's overlooked, a lot of people focus on the sin part, God judging mm -hmm. sin. He really came down hard on some people and he said, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. And they went, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and he went, oh, really? And uh, some people lost their lives as a result of that. Yeah. A little lesson I learned about uh, lack of faith is Moses, as you think he's a big man of God, right at their first meeting, it says God was mad at Moses mm. because God said, I'm going to send you to the Hebrews and call them out. He goes, I don't know if I can do that. And it says God was angry with him. Yeah. So um, yeah. so I learned that uh, it's a balance. Uh, so the best kind of faith is just uh, the kind of faith that just you don't give up. If you're hanging on by your fingernails, but you're mm -hmm. still hanging on, God looks at that and goes, okay, I got mm -hmm. respect for that. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and, and Jesus knew that. He said, um, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, yeah. uh, that's good. You can move a mountain. So the main thing for me is don't give up. Uh, you wake up and I go, okay, God, well, you're not here today either, I guess. God, you haven't spoken to me, speaking to me for a long time, but I'm not going anywhere. So uh, that's what I have to deal with uh, sometimes when I am struggling yeah. is uh, just hang on by your fingernails and God's impressed by that. Wow. Um, so that's a level of perseverance, right? Persevering mm -hmm. through those trials, through those trials and tribulations as the Bible calls them. Um, but what's what's the... What enables you to do that? I mean, it's one thing to say, I need to hang on by my fingernails. And it's another thing to say, I know how to do that. Hmm. How did you learn to do that? Easy answer. Uh, there's a little Bible verse. So we, we weren't going to get into uh, church this morning <laughs> because I'm a businessman. He's a businessman. She runs a, a great ministry. Yeah. But uh, if you want to know us, you gotta, you're got you going to hear a little bit about how God works in our lives. Yeah. Uh, but the answer to that, there's a Bible verse. I think it's the book of Romans. It says, and it's powerful. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. I'll tell you how not to do it. You don't sit there and go and grit your teeth and, and squinch and say, I'll have faith, I'll have faith. It's not going to work. You're yeah. going to exhaust yourself. When you read the stories in the Bible and see how consistent God comes through. Now, he may wait a long time right. and you may go through some really hellish circumstances, <laughs> but down the road before you know it, he comes through all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. uh, so I read those and see that. And it happened to this character and that character and this character and that character. Even great prophets like the prophet Elijah. Uh, it wasn't mm -hmm. Elijah. It was one of the others. Um, it said, oh, God, you might as well kill me. I regret the day I was born. And this is after a major miracle. So even the prophets, the, the God's mouthpieces on earth, though, have their doubts and their downtimes. Yeah. So they're, it's a mixture. Your faith will always be a mixture of both mm -hmm. a, a one man is, he's unnamed but uh jesus said don't you believe in me and he said yes i do lord help my unbelief that's us um Amen. you will have if you can have a mustard seed of faith and hang on and not give up yeah and, but you can also uh feel like giving up then you're human yeah so yeah that's what it is. i love that so let's talk about how you guys met because um I think there's a pretty remarkable story. You want to hear the story? Yeah. She okay. has a great story. It's your, it's your <laughs> yeah. I love your she, story. She always says, okay, you tell the story. Right. It's a good story. Um, uh, we actually met at an event. She was singing. She sings here and there, but she's also majorly involved in helping the elderly. She has a passion for the elderly. Mm. Uh, so uh, it just so happens that I would MC an event annually. Uh, that um, that I would just MC as a radio person. You MC a lot of events. I don't like MC really, uh, but I, I really felt this impression in my spirit to help this one woman, not her, but a mutual friend of ours who heads uh, a ministry. To, and and I just felt like the Lord said, uh, do it uh, every year, MC that event, do whatever she wow. asks, and don't charge her. Now that's kind of unusual, really, because if I'm going to take my time to do something like I want, I'd like an honorary. Yeah, but with least. her. Uh, she kept writing me checks and I said, okay, next time you write me a check, okay, I'm going to throw it away. So she, she respected me. Now she tries to get around it by giving me Starbucks cards. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm at that event. Uh, I look over at the roster of whoever's there and, and see some, uh, a great Christian artist. That's a mutual friend of ours, Matthew Ward, Christian mm, music legend. Him. I like to see him. Love him. A local artist in Colorado Springs named Shannon Aducci, who is absolutely amazing. Hmm. Uh, so I'd seen them several times. They were friends of hers. So she's singing that night, I think after, right before Matthew Ward. 
And I introduced them, I introduced her on stage and did an interview with her as I interview artists. And uh, so nothing remarkable happened really that night we met. Um, I'd gone through a divorce about four years before that. So I wasn't dating and my life is just fine. <laughs> so not interested. Uh, so I, when I interviewed her, I'd, you know, it'd be great, make a great movie to say the sparks went off and fireworks. And uh, she was just an attractive woman that I have an interview. Hmm. And um, so nothing happened, uh, but she has a thing she's going to talk to you about a ministry she has. And she has this device that she puts Christian music on yeah. uh, for elder, elderly. And she'll get into that in a minute. But uh, she called me several days after that event and said, would you uh, put your voice and voice and Bible verses? I have music mm. from all my Christian artist friends, some of her music's on there. Right. I would like some Bible verses between those. I said, well, absolutely. Uh, so no charge for that. Yeah, let's do that. So we worked professionally for about the next year. Then I'm working at my church and I have a great, like I said, my life is great. Uh, sometimes life's a, a pain. It's a trial. Honestly, I would, I almost felt guilty about this. My life is great and I was happy. Uh, I'd ask people, are you happy? And they'd go, oh, I don't know if I am. And they'd say, are you happy? I'd go, yep, I am. So mm -hmm. my life's going great. I'm working at my church and uh, using my time. I have a lot of free time because my business doesn't require a lot of time to run it. So I start working with men at my church and, and uh, I've been through a lot of uh, wars in my life. So I take these, you know, as fellow warriors, I'm sharing my war advice with these guys, I'm mentoring guys. And this one man, um, he said, how do I get in nursing homes? And I want to reach those people and, and help them and minister mm. them. But I have a dog. Uh, my dog is very friendly. People love dogs. Yeah. So how do I get, walk in the door of the nursing home and uh, they greet my dog and see my dog. And then I, I can connect and minister to them. How do you do that? Mm. And I said, I have no idea. But I know this woman in, near Colorado Springs uh, that she does this all the time. She goes on these tours and does this. She had been in a few hundred senior homes. So she knows a thing or two about walking the front door. She's very charismatic as far as one-on-one. -on -one, and people love her when they meet her. I said, she can train you. I contacted her and said, can we get together? I've got a total of the situation. She said, yeah, let's get together and I'll, I'll coach him on this. Uh, so, okay, we have that set up. Um, interestingly enough, the day before the same event a year later that we met. Mm. Uh, so there's nothing going on. We're just mutual uh, acquaintances, basically, that respect each other. But uh, she texted me and said, Rick, can we uh, talk? And I said, well, sure. I thought she's going to change the name, uh, change the, the time of the meeting. So uh, I said, yeah, let's chat. And she said, I got a problem. I said, what's that? She goes, Rick, uh, I'm a single woman. And she says, I really uh, uh, have, uh, she didn't say, use the word integrity, but that's how I interpret it. Mm -hmm. She said, I have this uh, thing that I have to follow. I got to follow my conscience. And I feel kind of funny about meeting with two, maybe married guys. I don't know if you're married or not. Um, so uh, two mar uh, maybe married guys late mm -hmm. at night after the event. She said, I just feel funny about that. Wow. She listens. Uh, she has a, I, I tell her, you got the a pipeline to God because she hears these uh, Im impressions from God. Mm, mm. Uh, now with me, I'm not like that. God speaks to me. It's usually with a sledgehammer <laughs> right. upside the head with her. He whispers and she <laughs> tunes in and she said, I'm just a little funny meeting late at night with two guys who may be married. And I said, I respect that. Yeah. Uh, I respect that your boundaries, we can move it. I said, I'm not married. I don't think he is, but I'll check. So, uh, we started chatting a little bit that day. Uh, long story short, she actually did think I was married. Mm. Uh, for because well, okay, because, well, yeah, because was, <laughs> I was wearing a ring. Oh, that yeah, oh, the, big deal. Uh, all those years, uh, I wasn't married, but I wore a ring. And my strategy mm. was, uh, I wanted to work on building my business, uh, and just was enjoying life. The mm. ring stayed on because it would uh, telegraph to women, not available, right. it telegraphed to me. You better not flirt because they'll think you're weird because you're married. Right. So that was fine. Worked yeah. My life. Yeah. Well, un uh, the unintended consequences <laughs> the year before, I didn't know this. She actually glanced my way at that event where we met. Mm. And then she saw the ring, she yeah. says. So uh, anyway, so she didn't know. Her. She thinks I'm married. I said, Lori, I'm not married. Well, that opened the door uh, for us kind of chatting by text that day. It was uh, September 17th. Uh, about a year ago, 2022. Mm. So we started chatting, I think just a few texts and just her text. She's a great writer, a great mm. speaker, but a great writer. And she writes phenomenally fast. It's a freakish thing. She, <laughs> she just tears through that. She's writing these texts. I'm going, she is 
really a good communicator. And that's huge for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Conversation yeah. communication is massive. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, uh, you know, I want to be friends and buddies with her, but how do you approach this and let her know it's not going to be a dating thing? I thought, well, I'll be being straightforward. So I sent her a text, the now infamous text, she calls it. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you think you and I can be friends and leave romance out of it? <laughs> a little bold. Okay, ladies, how would you perceive that if that's how the how the, uh, the text that you get from them? I've had it. We've had people say, what a cheesy line. <laughs> well, a line. It was tell, letting her know I want to be buddies. So she calls right away. And we actually said, yeah, we can do this. Mm. Uh, she said, well, can I just moved to Colorado a short time ago? Do you hike? Uh, so here's what she, she wants out of the deal. I need a hiking partner. Yeah, I'll follow your little advice there or your little direction. If we can hike. I'm like, yeah, we can do that. So we started uh, chatting. I thought I found another buddy in the area because uh, my best friend's getting married. Uh, so I thought, I'm not, he's going to have less time. So I need somebody to hang out with right. a little more. <laughs> so uh, she seemed like a nice person. Uh, so we started talking. I expected just a buddy who happens to be a female. Yeah. Uh, as long as she respected my boundaries, it's not going to be anything more than a friendship. But that was before I conversed with her. Got on the phone, talked for two hours. After that conversation, I went, huh, she is a great conversationalist. And that's mm. huge with me. Yeah. So I called her the next day since it's not a flirt, flirty friendship, kind of a girlfriend, boyfriend thing. I thought, I'm going to ask her if we can talk again. I wasn't worried about, well, should I wait three days? <laughs> right. you know, I got to play my cards. Right. Just right. right. So the cool guy. <laughs> well, I don't care. And she said, hey, I liked your conversation too. Let's talk again. And we talked that night. Next night I went, hey, let's talk again. By the third conversation, we're still friends. And I'm emphasizing, it's got to stay a friendship. Nothing more. But I was recognizing something. By our third conversation, I thought, she is the most beautiful soul of anyone mm -hmm. I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, number one. Number oh. two, she's one of the best conversationalists I've ever known in my life. And just loved her heart and, uh, and her authenticity. Uh, yeah. I just I could just feel authenticity, which is mm. huge for me. So uh, we kept remaining friends, and uh, about uh, six days later, now this is, gets a, a little interesting here, a little weird, but uh, you know they say, uh, watch out what you pray for, you may get it. <laughs> uh, I said well, we're going to keep this a friendship. She said, have you talked to God about it? you ever prayed about that? And I'm like, well, no, of course, God. <laughs> Of course, I haven't. God's on my side on this one. You wanted a godly woman, right? So <laughs> yeah, I was not looking for any woman. Uh, so she said, "Would you pray about it and mm. see if that's really what God wants?" And I said, "Wow, oh, well, I will. And that's biblical. You pray about things. Yeah. If you don't, you can stumble into things you didn't intend to." So we met that. We did move that meeting to earlier in the day. But she and I decided to hang out for a few hours before that, since we we're getting very close as friends. <laughs> and I did pray about it. I had done a podcast um, and I'm watching the clock going, okay, I got to finish up this podcast for a group. I finished the podcast and closed my computer, darted down to Monument, Colorado, where she lives about 40 minutes away. And I said, okay, here's the prayer. Okay, God, if you want to do something uh, more than friendship, let me know, but I can't see it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see it. She's a wonderful person, uh, an attractive woman. But I just don't, can't see it past mm. that, just friendship. That's all I could see. Yeah. Uh, so we showed up at a park. Just We're going to hang out at this park, walk around, and look at this little lake near uh, Palmer Lake, Colorado. And, uh, and this is very rare for me. Uh, I'd like to say God works miracles in my life all the time. Uh, but uh, he works just enough to keep me hanging on. But I'm sitting there talking to her. We started talking. And then something happened almost like a, a, a supernatural thing. Um, I just looked at her. The only way I can describe it is God just pulled the veil off. I looked mm -hmm. in her eyes and went, uh, emotions started happening all over the place. We had talked for six days. This had not happened during our talk. Yeah. But after I prayed that prayer, uh, I, I began feeling some wild emotions. I'm a guy that's under control with my emotions. I coach guys, you know, I'm falling in love with this woman and the time he isn't right. I go, well, suck it up and stop it. <laughs> Stop those emotions. I think you actually can have control of your emotions. People say, oh, it's my emotions. I can't control it. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> Didn't work for me that day. Uh, she actually said that morning, she goes, she said, I think I have butterflies. Do you? And I said, no, no. <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah, by that time, it wasn't butterflies flying around. It was like pterodactyls right. attacking my heart. And uh, mm. she noticed something too. So now I'll tell you your part. Well, he couldn't look me in the eye at all. The whole entire time, you wouldn't look me in, the, in my eyes. Yeah, I was, because the emotions are going nuts. 
So I saw it then, and that was the turning point. Six day, our friendship lasted six days. I said, okay, mm -hmm. I can definitely see pursuing a relationship with this woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been uh, almost a year. You try so hard to be in control. I did. Uh, yeah, and I, I couldn't do it. But, but because I didn't know her, once you get to know her, people just really love her heart. Mm -hmm. uh, God's made her, wired her in an amazing way. Everybody sees it. And I saw it too. So yeah. uh, then that's, uh, that's how the story got started. Wow. wow. That's pretty pretty <laughs> interesting to see how that goes from nothing to something oh he to, tries so hard yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> he kept saying that i'm like oh wow okay don't fall in love with me don't fall in love. i didn't want to hurt her yeah uh, you know, so, so don't let's not wander into love it's not gonna happen but god can do anything he wants <laughs> that's right there you go bob so Lori, um you lost your husband several years before that Right. Can you kind of tell that story? Because that, I thought that was really fascinating how everything was fine. I mean, the, you guys were starting doing really great things to help senior citizens. She's going to she's going to blow your mind with what she does. But um, helping senior citizens in convalescent, in hospice, all that stuff. And you and your husband are doing this great work. Thinking that's why he put us. Together. That's why I put you together. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, by all means. Yeah. right? That's why God did that. Right. And then um, tell the story about how when you went to work. Oh, with the ministry? Yeah. Uh, when you went to work and came home and he was he had passed. Oh, that part. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had, we had been doing the senior ministry for six years. And yeah, and that really was what I thought. I'm like, okay, right. we both knew God put us together to do this ministry. I'm like, okay, we know our purpose. This is very obvious. And then, um, yeah, I went to work one day. And every morning, here, I'll tell you the story. Every morning he would pray over me. Mm. he woke up that morning he wasn't feeling good and he, he said he was hurting and arm aching the classic symptoms but yet he still prayed over me mm. as i'm leaving for work mm. over my day that everything would be well and i came home that day and found him on the floor he had had a massive heart attack so the cool not cool thing about that of course it was very emotional but i remember thinking there's something about death and actually seeing it yeah. and knowing i was just with him that made me like something clicked i'm like okay, this is real. I felt mm -hmm. that close to heaven. I go, this is so real. I go, my life will never be the same because, uh, and I knew that I'm like, I'm going to start living now because this is, it was real. Right. Uh, I can't even explain to you. Right. There's just a feeling like I was that close to heaven. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember praying and I was very shy. Didn't like to speak in front of people. Still don't really like to do, but <laughs> very shy. He ran everything. So I was just kind of behind the scenes. And I remember praying, okay, God, if you want me to continue this, you need to give me double what he had. Cause he was very, uh, very bold and very outgoing. I'm like, I need that in my life mm -hmm. to be able to do this ministry. And God did that. I mean, suddenly I'm speaking in front of groups. Yeah. That I never would have done it before. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a hard time, but I saw God working through it. And you finished and wrote his book. Oh, that's right. I, Let's talk about that because okay. that was a cool story. Well, that was kind of cool. He was writing a book about bringing church to the elderly. And I was, yeah, wait, yeah, are you grasping this? this I know, I their mission, that. their whole thing, their whole mission in their life was to bring church, church to, to the, the elderly. elderly. Um, I can think of a lot more glorious, glamorous things to mm. do than that. I can think of a lot more things that would get you um, the appreciation, respect, um, significance of a lot more things than doing that. And yet they felt called to do that. And not only did they feel called to do it as a couple, but they did it together as a couple. And, and then he's suddenly taken mm -hmm. and she's got these manuscripts. Well, it's funny what you say. I got to say, as you're mm -hmm. saying that, who would want to do that? But James 127 says mm -hmm. pure and undefiled religion before the father is visiting orphans and yes. widows and they're you're, just you're that's like the right. most important thing right. to him pure and undefiled right visiting orphans and widows so yeah he had written this book about how to do what we were doing actually going every sunday into assisted living and doing church because they can't get out they're sitting there in their walkers mm -hmm. and wheelchairs no one's taking them to church they don't have that ability if their family's not taking them so um he wrote this book and the whole time i was editing it I'm not telling him that I wanted to put it in a book form. He just wanted to staple it, uh, hand it out okay. to people. And I'm like, and I didn't say that to him. Well, seriously. So you had a vision for it. Yeah. Outside like, of his vision. Yeah. For yeah. It. And I didn't, I didn't say a word because I was working on behind the scenes, like I said. And the night before he died, he even said, hey, how's that book going? Can I make copies? And I'm not wanting to tell him what it is. And funny thing is, then he passed away the next day. And I made it my mission to get that book done and get it out in the next year. Hmm. 
So, and you got it done. And I got it done. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I love that. I love the title. And then I love the yeah. story behind the story of that. So that was really cool. Um, you know, looking back on your husband's gone, you have to decide, am I going to continue to do right. this without him? I mean, I, I needed, I needed different skill sets than maybe I had and God right. blessed you with those. Um, was there a moment where you said enough is enough? I can't do it. Nope. No, I think that's actually what kept me going after mm. he died. Mm. Um, helped me through the grieving process yeah. was moving forward and helping other people. Yeah. And these little old ladies, <laughs> right? you love the ladies, but, but, you? They're all, but they're all widows. They were all widows. So they're actually ministering to me the whole time. I'm like, Holy I'm with cow. a group of widows. They're the ones uh, making sure there's food for me. Uh, things like that and they're all you know and they're ministering just, to you they're ministering to me but helping me through my grieving yeah so who would have yeah, ever I, thunk that exactly. right yeah I, I couldn't stop doing what I do even my pastor stood back he goes I don't even know what happened to you Lori I mean because suddenly I decided to make form the ministry the ministry didn't exist until after he he passed away and the ministry is Ephesians 320 yeah org right uh, 320 ministries.org uh, is the original ministry name. yeah for Ephesians 3.20 that Look. says that God does above and beyond what we can imagine. And that's what he's done. So yeah, I, I launched it. I launched it about four months after he passed away and uh, just dove right into it. it Do you ever ask yourself why you were entrusted with that? I've never asked myself that. No, I just... Uh, I just do it. I just feel very called. I feel like, you know, people are trying to find their purpose. I remember the first yeah. interview I did and I called my mom. I said, mom, I, this is what I was meant to do. This is what I was born to do. Mm. It's just like, it's inside wow. me. Yeah. We were at a wedding the other night and, and I just, the first thing I, I see all the little, <laughs> little old ladies and little, and I'm just like drawn to them. I can't even explain it. What was the one that was at the wedding? She, she, was, she was 97 I, years old. She, was just she got old. pictures. She brings little, yeah, little pictures. She was adorable. You can't. So yeah. Other, other people like little babies. I'm like these little old people. Mm -hmm. They're so, well, we're all going to be there one day. That's right. And they have pure hearts. They don't care anymore mm -hmm. about, you know, looking a certain way before people. Status. Yeah. Prestige. They're, and they're just so um authentic and yeah. open and real they'll say they'll tell you anything yeah so yeah mm. so you've got this great ministry and the first time i heard about her was she was i think you were in vegas at the time when i first yeah heard you in 2017 yeah. right and then you were moving you were going to michigan no minnesota well i wasn't i didn't i retired um and i didn't i wanted to go to colorado okay but the housing was ridiculous so i went to go stay with family okay in minnesota for a season and to mississippi and yeah. Right. And then next thing I know, she's in Colorado. I'm like, wow, I used to live in Colorado. I love Colorado. So mm -hmm. that was really fun. And I knew, you know, I knew Rick lived there, but I didn't even put the two together because it was way before they ever met. And, um, but you moved to Colorado and I just remember all these great posts where she's talking about um, the beauty of God and, you wow. know, she's taking these pictures and just, it was like, yeah, I remember that was, that was a beautiful area to live and uh, the pictures that you took but then i see you going i'm going on a tour i'm going on a tour and i'm thinking is she a musician is she a what is she in a band You're what, the same. yeah rick and i both thought the same thing but we yeah. didn't, we didn't know it at the same time but i was like what? a tour a hope tour i'm like hope, hope tour. okay so okay ministry so she's expanding and giving hope how oh how this is the question oh, yeah and the answer well let me tell you the story yeah. behind that before yeah. colorado was i um it was a god thing that i could actually retire thanks to 20 thanks to covid mm. i had a buyout program at my office and i had i had actually written in my journal on three march 27th it was my birthday i said god make a way an unobstructed way for me to do this ministry full time and have health benefits because I'm, I'm 56 years old. You know, I don't, I can't get Medicare. And uh, when we went back to work about a month and a half later, they did a buyout and they said, we'll give you this much if you leave and we'll give you two years of health insurance. They've never done Bingo. it. I know. I was like, he, like he saw what I wrote and said, okay, this will make it really obvious to you, Lord. Right. It's time to move on. Right. So I'm thinking, all right, God's got a big plan here. I'm going to retire, sell my house. I left everything. I didn't take anything with me, but just, just personal items. 
You just packed up. I packed. I just yeah, my, my guitar and my my clothes and left. I left everything in the house, all the oh, dishes, bedding. It. I mean everything, and left. And so I'm thinking God's going to do something right away, mm. but He didn't. Mm-hmm. I sat. I traveled. I tried to get a house. The market was crazy. And when you talk about trusting God, did not. I was mm-hmm. mad at him. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm out here. I left my job. I sold my house. I left all my security behind. Good money, everything. And here I sit. So um, what had happened before the Hope Tour was I had seen a house in Colorado, wanted it, but things went so fast. I actually drove out to see it and they sold it before I got there. So I learned some things about that. And I was mad at him. I mean, I was, I, I remember the morning I got up at like 3.30 in the morning crying, like, what are you doing? You know, here I, I left everything for you yeah. and I'm still struggling. And I was crying and praying. And I thought, well, let me go on Facebook a couple hours later, or let me read the Bible, nothing. I go, okay. And then I went to Facebook and I had a friend of mine, uh, John Morgan, who I mm-hmm. told you about yeah. the George Bush yeah. personary. He'd had, he did a live show every morning. It was like a prayer time. And he saw that I was on it. And he started talking about what I do with these little hope players. That I'll tell you about. Yeah. And I had about 200 of them sitting in my brother's basement. And I never had gone on a tour. I didn't think I was just trying to hand them out wherever I could. Mm-hmm. But um, if people would write me. So um, he said, none of us wants to get to a place where she doesn't want, where we hear uh, cries, fr- cries from a fiery below or whatever that you never told me. Like mm-hmm. from the elder, you never told me about God. You never told yeah. me about what I could have. And I just wept. I go, I'm so sorry, God. I'm so focused on me getting a house, what you're trying to do. I forgot about the mission you had me on. That's to let others know, let the elderly know that you exist and that you love them and give them hope. And I said, I have 200 hope players in my base, in the basement. I'm going on tour. I mean, I decided that day, kind of like you had had mentioned. So uh, I called a friend said, Hey, can you work this out? Can you go on tour with me? And she said, yes. Things fell into place that was the same time that they had this concert they wanted me to sing at. And I kept saying, no, no, no. Mm. Turned out <clears throat> I would be driving through the area at the same time he was emceeing. I go, okay, I'm saying yes to it. That's how we ended up connecting. <clears throat> got on the road. And the first day after I got on the road for my very first Hope tour, I got a call from a realtor, realtor that there was a, a house available right where I was looking. Uh, wasn't going to go on the market. It was an inside deal. And if I wanted it first day on the road, yeah. So God does take care of you. Even when you don't, even when you don't trust him, that's (laughs) That's cool. Even when I didn't trust or believe and I'm yelling at him and mad at him. He said, no, I got it. I got the perfect house for you. Hmm. Yeah. You'd be about my business and I'll take care of yours. That's what he was saying to me. I think sometimes we, we think God's going to be mad at us and he's going to, and God (laughs) knows us. He knows, he knows what we're going to do before we do it. So he's already figured this out and um so i love i love when sometimes i go god i i don't know anymore and i, I i'm really doubting you right. and he goes right. good i'm yeah. going to show you something that is going to blow you away yeah wow um so i love that he did that for you in in that moment you know um and now you guys you're, you you guys have gone on a couple of tours together. What, four tours together? Uh, well, let, let me answer that and mm-hmm. categorize that the correct <laughs> way. She'll go on the tours. Tour okay. tours. Uh, but uh, she tries to connect it as much as she can with uh, other people that may be donors, right. that may be family, friends. She knows sure. more people than I've ever known anybody in my life. She knows more people than there are on the planet. <laughs> so she so she's touring around. And then then at times, since I still have my business to run, We'll work it in there and we'll say, okay, here's a seven day period of time or something right. like that. And I'll fly in and join her for a part of that yeah. as we connect with family and friends. Yeah. So I'll join her uh, at times uh, on tours. So what's, yeah. what's the best part of what you do? Because I can, I can see there's, you know, there's a lot of aspects of it that would be a driving force for you. Oh yeah. But what's the best part for you? I mean, is it, is it that, is it that that elderly person who's about to leave the planet right um and you get to minister to them or is it that first day that you meet somebody that you've never met before in a home um and the reason i'm asking this guys is, is she does a unique thing she doesn't she doesn't always have an appointment at the convalescent I never center. do never yeah, do so, i never do and she doesn't she doesn't have people introducing her and taking her. she literally walks in and says here's who i am here's what i've got I would love to help your people, right. basically, and and the doors that have been opened. How many? How many? 
places do you think you've ministered to? Oh, almost 300 places that I've walked in. 300 doors. places yeah. across the country. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and just in the last couple of years. It's so. just crazy. But can so, I explain to it what it is? Yeah. They're probably yeah. wondering, what is a hope tour? Yeah. And then I'm going to show the device. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. This is, uh, and the story behind this is miraculous too. This is called. Close so they can see it there. Close. This is the Hope Player. Hope uh, is the name I came up with because it's got hymns on it. So it's hymns of praise for the elderly, H-O-P-E. Uh, and even the story behind this is miraculous. But this is what I do. I tour around and just stop at random senior homes, hospice centers, memory care centers, drop these off. Uh, you push it, but can I play it? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, you just push a button. It's real simple to use. You push the button. And then it plays all the old hymns. Oh. Wow. So that's uh, the best part for me is when I get letters and comments back saying that uh, it could be a patient that's really restless and this calms mm -hmm. them down gives them peace when they're hurting. A memory care uh, patients will sing along word for word. They may not speak a word to you, but they will sing every word. Mm -hmm. um, I've had several tell me how their uh, parent has passed away listening to this and I just mm -hmm. calm them down. Mm -hmm. I think those are the most, that mean the most to me sure. is when I know that um, someone is, has got peace. And that's how the start was because I was with a lady that I sang to and I could just see the peace that the old hymns mm -hmm. brought to her. Um, my favorite story of all though was on 320. I would always want to do something special on 320. And I asked God just to somehow use me that day. And I, I thought it was going to be, I was going to buy a bunch of gift cards to Target and deliver them. My, that's not what he did. I wanted to find something special, but what happened was I stopped by a hospital center and dropped off a bunch of these. And the nurse came up to me. Uh, actually, when I met her, she said, I know exactly who this is going to. He's going home today. He was going to pass away that day. Wow. She goes, he's on his way out. She so like, they know. Yeah, she like ran this down to him. He was a, a former pastor and he didn't have anyone there with him at all. Wow. He was by himself. So she like ran this down, put it by his bedside so that she could hear the old hymns before wow. he went home to yes. see Jesus. So those mm -hmm. stories are what, what mean the most to me. Wow. How do you unpack that? I mean, that, the, you know, we know Romans 8, 29, for whom he knew, foreknew, he also predestined, right? Mm -hmm. So- this is, this is kind of a predestination. I mean, he knew you were going to be doing this and he's opening doors for you and you're walking through them. Right. I think that's the real power of the thing is that God opened the door, but then you had the willingness to walk through it. Walk through. What made you willing to walk through it? I mean, you've, you've retired, you're uncertain about, you know, beyond finances and stuff like that. And obviously your health insurance, right. but yet you still walk through the door. Why? I knew that's what I was supposed to do. That was my passion. That was my, that's what makes me, that's what makes me cry. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me um, move forward. When I don't do it, you know this, Rick has seen this. If I'm just sitting around doing nothing, I'm, it's almost depressing to me. The moment I get out and I talk to people yeah. and bring these places, I like light up. It's yeah. who I am. I can't not do it. If that makes sense. I, I remember yes. my pastor saying that. So Absolutely. I cannot not do this because yeah. it's a driving force. There's something inside me that just says, keep going. You know, until I'm sure there's a point where I won't be able to do this. So I can't even use it about traveling because you don't like to travel, which is really funny. <laughs> Doesn't like to travel, but um, I can't sit still. And I think the reason I can't sit still is because God wants me to keep moving. Right. Yeah, his plan. Yeah. yeah, it's his plan. So it's not like there's anything wrong with me. It's just that I it's everything in me says go. And right. And so this. would you say this is and, and I asked this question on Facebook last week because I, I believe that there is a difference but I also believe that people interchange them very frequently. Um, would you say this is a calling or your purpose? Well, I wouldn't even know what the difference is. Um, it feels like it's my purpose right now. Like this mm -hmm. is what I was created for. Didn't we just hear a sermon on that? Like what did God knew before the world became what we we're yeah, going to be right. doing. And, and I can see it too, because even when I was younger, uh, I always love to sit and talk to the elderly. So it was something that was inside mm. me. And I didn't know, I mean, I knew nothing about this ministry when I first got into it. Just, it was a church saying, hey, do you want to go? Uh, we were just singing for the elderly. And and then I saw the need, I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, this is powerful. And it just grew inside of me. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, you know, Rick, I, I haven't shown the picture I showed to you earlier, 
um, to Rick. I hadn't shown that to him. Wow. So when Rick's dad and my mom divorced, we moved back to California. So in that was fifth grade. So in sixth grade, uh, we lived down the street. My mom and I lived rented a little house, and we lived down the street from this convalescent home. It was Cherry Lee Convalescent Home in El Monte, California. Hmm. And and I remember I would go down there, and I would I would walk by, and and I would find somebody and say, "Does somebody have does does somebody not have a visitor today?" And they'd be like, "Yeah." And I'm sixth grade, but this was my mom's home. My mom was very very caring, very loving, and she, and she says, um, "I said okay, so is." Was somebody not have a visitor today? And they go, yeah, you know, so and so and so and so. And um, so I would go and I would read to them, or I would visit them and just talk to them, or ask them questions. Man, I learned so much from them. And um, but so I would do that, and I did it for so long. I loved, I loved that opportunity at that point. And then in tenth grade, we moved to Lubbock, Texas, and I meet this guy named Steve Nelson. Steve, if you're watching, I love you, man. And we were. Um, we were in 10th grade. I was new at school, so I didn't know anybody. And he and I connected and he played the guitar and I played, I was just learning the guitar and we both sang. And one day he says, you know, what if we, what if we put together like a little band? I'm like a band of two, yeah. you know? And uh, I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And uh, he was a much better guitarist than I was. So he said, um, maybe we could find like a, a senior citizen place to go sing at hmm. and i said okay so his mom took us and we sang at the seniors and so that was in 10th grade well, well he and i lost track with each other again facebook 2017 same year that i connected with Lori on, on facebook 2017 steve nelson sends me this picture of he and i oh. in 10th grade <laughs> playing at that that one senior citizen and i'm like i'm playing at a senior citizen in 2000 I mean, in 1980, 88, 1980, yeah. And, and then here, this uh, is her full-time ministry. Right. Um, it was really cool. I love that. It was just, a, it was a great, great thing. Um, I so I have a heart for what you do, but I'm glad I don't do what you do. Why? Um, that's not my, that's not my purpose, not nor yet. is it my calling. Okay. Um, I have, I love people. But um, yeah, I love people and um, I definitely know where I'm directed. Right. And so I, I, I will stay, stay in my lane. But when I heard you talking about what you do and I was researching and looking at them and then, and then Rick gets connected and then I'm learning more about what you're doing with Rick. And I'm thinking, what on earth? Right. And I'm like, man, that is powerful. But even though you like, you just met a hundred year old gentleman. Yeah. You well, enjoyed spending time. With, it's not like you have to do it. Full I time. would take, I would take him on a cross country trip, man. A <laughs> hundred yeah, years old. And he's mowing the lawn and filling the gas tank for his dog. Yeah. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you are just amazing. But there is something about, I mean, you enjoy yeah. what you did. No, you don't have to do what I do full time, but right. everyone can go one time and do a senior home and just visit or bring a guitar. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all the time. Just one time. Uh, just talk with them, yeah. you know, for a half hour. We, what would you say that, let's call, talk about a couple of things. One is how to, how to help people that are moving through grief, because a lot of the elderly people are going to be moving through that. Sure. You, you had to move that and go through that journey. I've had to go through that journey. You've had to go through it. So, mm -hmm. um, and all of us will go through that journey at one point or another. So um, let's talk about that. But also before we get into that, let's talk about, um, what do you say to them when you one? What do you say to the staff when you first get there and go, "Hey, I want to talk to them." Let me. How do you do that? How do you cross that barrier? Well, it's actually they ask me. I don't usually ask really? them, but when I walk in, I bring a gift for the caregivers themselves because okay. their job is hard. Brutal. What they do Brutal. is so hard, and they they watch a lot of death. You know, they become friends with these yeah. residents, and then they see them die. I know it's mm -hmm. really hard. So I give them a gift first and yeah. I'm here to share the player and I bring the whole player in. And usually they say, well, I've got someone that's going, we met one gentleman in Arizona. So you tell them about the player. First. I, yeah, gotcha. I'm, I'm dropping off the gift so, because yeah. a lot of times since COVID, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you can't yeah. visit right. some of the residents. They, they have some policies and rules against that. But there are some places that say, oh, please come on in and meet so-and-so. And they're hurting. And there was one guy that just had lost his wife. We had gone to one. He had just lost his wife. And it was so sweet to bring. He actually put the player on his shoulder and just tears rolling down his face and just listened to it. 
So they actually asked me, can you come in and talk? So I don't ask them. It's usually their invite to me yeah. first. And there's always somebody. So they, yeah, they cool. get it and, and it helps them too. That's why I said, if anyone can go in, um, they love that because that's a lot of work. They have, you know, you got a hundred and something residents and there's only a few staff. So, and a lot of them do not have visitors. They don't have family. I had uh, in the senior home I worked in, there was one gentleman who was a professional skater, skated with Sonia Henney oh, back in the day, yeah. Dorothy Nord. Is that what her name? Dorothy Nord, I think it was. Oh. Um, skated in front of the Queen of England. Oh, in fact, oh. his wedding was uh, uh, it was an hour long special over there. Here he oh, is, man. 80 something years old, dying alone in a memory care center in Las Vegas, Nevada. No one around listening mm. to my CV. There was nobody there. He had no family. His wife had passed away. He had no children. And he's by himself. So people don't realize that a lot of these people are there by themselves and you just go in for a moment and sit with them. Mm. What do you say family. to them first? When you when you first walk into their room, what do you say first? To an elderly person? Mm. I don't know. I just uh it's it's different for everyone you meet. Okay. You know, if they're not if they're sad, I, I might give them a hug and comfort them and just share my story a little bit yeah. or make jokes with them. It's it's all different, like mm. anyone, you know. Hmm. What's the the best response somebody's given you immediately? Wow, that's tough. Uh, I really can't answer okay. that. Yeah, I don't know. They're just it's just loving on them, yeah. and holding them, and and. How often do they cry? Quite often, yeah. How do you handle that? I just hug them. I love on them. You were there for one yeah. of them. You know, I just uh, is she, like, yeah. hold her hand and and talk and share my story. And... She's very affectionate. She will, she'll give to them what they need right then, and it's uh, affection. Yeah. And she'll hold them. Yeah. complete strangers. Now I'm not wired like that. You know, you get a. A lot of people aren't. They, they might oh know me ten years. You might get a hug. <laughs> she, yeah, she walk right in and just. Uh, I gave you a hug last night yeah, yesterday at church. It's been uh, thirty years, Bob and I. Hug <laughs> yeah. So she just will hold I'll her hug hand. I'll hug them and get close to yeah. them, and, and comfort they them. need touch yeah. too. They really need touch. People yeah. won't mm -hmm. do that either. Um, they, so, what would you say to somebody who's going in and they they want to be of ministry, they want to be of service to the, but mm -hmm. but they don't feel maybe they don't feel called, but they they want to, but they don't. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to approach the person. You've got a well, great book well, for it. That's interesting. Yeah. But, well, we did church services. And, yeah. and most of the time, though, it's, it's funny. They'll talk to you. Hmm. You just sit there and listen. They have lots to say. <laughs> oh, they'll <laughs> yeah, they'll talk. Like the little lady we met the other night. Oh, she'll talk a whole they time. They want to be heard. Yeah. They want to, they want to feel significant again. Yeah. And she walks in. She has a, it's a gift God has put on her. Mm. When she talks to you within 30 seconds, you almost feel like she's your best friend for life. They can, they feel wow. that and it's something about her heart. So they're, they'll open up to her before they'll open up to anybody. They just mm. want to talk, yeah. ask them yeah. questions. Like you ask questions. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Tell me about your life. Tell me about your, do you have children? You know, where did you grow up? Anything. They just, mm. they just want to talk. And, and so what do you think is the greatest difficulty for people in that stage of their life the greatest difficulty um i think loneliness, mm, loneliness. yeah I've, I've walked by a lot of rooms and they're just sitting there and it's interesting that they'll be sitting on their couch no tv on just sitting there staring you know there's mm. even when you go into sometimes you go into a cafeteria where there's a lot of restaurants but they'll be sitting alone at a table they're not even talking to anybody else so i think loneliness is big for them and a lot of them are you know if they don't have family visiting them yeah. uh i know that's hard for them as well but i think that would be the biggest thing you know they're they're away from what they were used to their family their homes when a spouse passes away um i had one lady um whose husband was alive in a senior home but the moment he passed away now they have half their income she had to leave sell her stuff sell her car stop driving oh, move God. somewhere else i mean that's a lot it was a lot for me uh. when my husband passed away but to have to move at the same time and uh, mm. have new friends or no one there it's it's hard mm. can't even imagine that. yeah can't. but we're all going to be there yeah we are you know if we live to be that old we're all gonna we might end up in a right in a home where there's and we have no uh freedom either mm. you know you can't drive a car so you can't get out when you want to you have to mm. depend on other people and if you have no one else to depend on what do you do yeah you sit there mm. Mm. so let's talk about grief because we all need to learn how to deal with that right um what was the what was the 
turning point for you in your process of dealing with your husband's death? What was the turning point for you to be able to deal with that more effectively? Oh, the turning point. Interesting you say that. Um, I was angry at God for a very long, I mean, angry. I couldn't even, I couldn't sing any of the songs in churches that, mm. oh, you love me? I'm like, no, you don't, right? Mm. I was really, I've told Rick the story, You're really sure. angry. Yeah, though that didn't stop me from serving him and talk to him. Right. I'm still talking. Hey, I was like a love hate relationship. <laughs> like, I, I hate you too. This was not fine. But because we were in ministry, I thought, well, that was really cruel. Why would you give someone this? So I said, I go, why would you give someone to me and then take them away? Hmm. And it was such a short season, it was like six years. I go, that was just really mean. You know, I'm asking them. So you, hmm. you, you took him away, is what I kept saying. Right. So I was mad for seven years wasn't a short time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My sister-in-law called me out. She goes, you're still mad at him. I go, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I go, because he gave me a gift and he took the, who get, who gives a gift away? Who takes a gift back that they give you, right? <laughs> right? That's what it was. I go, who would do that? Who would take a gift back? So I'm sitting in a parking lot. I think I told you this story. I'm sitting in a parking lot for some reason after the conversation. And what hit me out of the blue was he knew, he knows everything. He knew when he was going to die. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't a surprise to him. Right. So it, it hit me. It's like, oh, you didn't take him away. You gave him. You knew he had six years to live. And you said, I'm going to put Lori oh. and his name is Jimmy together for this, six, this period. I've got mm -hmm. something to do. This is, a, I'm going to give mm -hmm. him to her, not take him away. Mm -hmm. But he, he already saw. He knew it was going to happen. So I'm like, oh, you gave him to me. You didn't take him away. You knew this is how much time I had. Yeah. And now looking back, now I see all the blessings of, that little amount of time because sure. it taught me that's how we got into senior ministry. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right. if it wasn't for that. I wouldn't be bold. He taught me some boldness I didn't have because um, he was very outgoing. So he'd shove me into situations I would never have done on my own. Um, and he literally shoved me. One time I had to sing on stage. Uh, <laughs> he did. He pushed me onto the stage, literally pushed me. I lost that's me. Great. But uh so um, it took me a long time. It wasn't like it was easy. My, I had a girlfriend who was a counselor and she said two to five years of grieving process. I'm like, I don't have time for that. Right. And I got it. I didn't, I cried every day for five yeah. years. Yeah. So, but I, I held the anger for so long. And when he finally showed me the bigger picture, like I gave him to you, I didn't take him away. I'm like, oh, mm. you did. Now That's I see a great it. Perspective. Yeah. 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 And I, I love the fact that, you know, we, we know that there is no specific amount of time for grieving. Right. It's just Energy. whatever it is, yep. right? Um, but the one thing I always say is do the work. <laughs> do the grieving. Allow the grieving. Whatever it is, whatever it looks like for you, however long it's going to take, that's all up to you. Right. But don't sweep it under the rug. Don't ignore it because mm -hmm. it'll just resurface later. Exactly. But um, I love the fact that you, for that, for that seven, that five years, you're just like, no, I don't yeah. like this. No, this is not good. This is not fair. This is not the way it's supposed oh, to be. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. can be real with God. He wants right. you to. He wants you to. Be. I know because people say you can't be mad at God. I'm like, yes, you can. Right. That was, he knew it anyways. I could be mad. Oh. And I, I actually swore at him. I mean, yeah. I, would, I don't swear <laughs> and I always swear a lot. So yeah, you yeah. can be whoever you want to be. Yeah, but, I love that. I, and you don't have to get rid of things. Some people that grieve, yeah. like one lady, like she, the day after her husband passed away, she's throwing all this stuff out. I mean, it yeah. took me five years to get rid of things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel like you've got to suddenly like take them out of your life and throw everything away. Right. So mm -hmm. there is a process. You're right. And everyone's different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, so, and some people got married like right away. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's been nine years for me and here's Rick. It right. It wasn't like I jumped in right. to something right away. I think that's important to to realize that you know not only is the grieving, uh, you know everyone's timetable may be different in right. dating, getting you know married again, whatever it is. Um, but I love the thing about with God because I think a lot of people think, well, God won't accept me because I'm angry with Him, hmm. and I always just laugh and I go, you know, the one thing I know about God is He's big enough to handle anything you can throw at Him. So you can be angry, you can be disappointed, you can cuss at him you can yell at him you can say he's wrong right. and god just goes okay well the psalms we david you. and the psalms oh All david, the perfect. yeah that. absolutely yeah absolutely so um rick as we wrap this up um you know you've been doing ministry for a long time and you've had your peaks and valleys and you've had your experiences you've had the the great um 
commission thrust on you to to go do it and do it in all these different stations around the country what do you think is the the precipice for you being so successful for a long period of time because sustainability is way more important to me uh, and to most of us than instant so how have you been so sustainable uh well for one thing uh if you don't just hop around from one thing to another uh, mm-hmm. seek, seek God, find your lane, find what you're good at. And sometimes it takes a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to change the subject here. I don't have a radio friend of mine. He's, he's good on radio. Uh, but, uh, and I watch him on Facebook. He's good on radio. And then he started uh, showing me some things on Facebook about two years ago. He said, hey, uh, take a look at a painting. And I'm going, this guy is an amazing painter. And I'm going, he shouldn't have been radio. This guy's painting, mm-hmm. he has a unique style. But it took him, I'm guessing he's about 40 years old, and he knows it now. He's showing one painting after another. I'm going, this guy is on to something here. Uh, so it takes you a long time. I started my business, uh, the, what I'm doing right now, with working with a bunch of U.S. stations and Canadian stations, some international. But I started that about 25 years ago. But that was after uh, maybe 10 or 15 years of working in radio, struggling with one radio job after another, trying to put something together. So uh, just do what you really like. It's a little more complex than that. You better not just do only what you like. You better make sure it's marketable uh, in some way. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it took me 10 or 15 years, uh, but just stay consistent. And the old cliches from even guys like the late Zig Ziglar would talk about consistency and persistency. Yeah. Uh, those yeah. are the most boring words in the world, but <laughs> right. those will make you successful. Right. Uh, so even if you're moderately successful, but you mm-hmm. keep working, keep finding your niche, uh, and give it time, give it patience. Just don't hop from one thing to another. Uh, no easy answer to that. But I've got to say this too. Uh, when I started my business, uh, specifically what I'm doing right now with radio stations, I didn't really come up with the idea. I didn't got to put it in my head, a unique marketing strategy for radio stations um, that uh, to approach them. So that came 25 years ago. Um, so most businesses fail within about three or four years. Is that right? So I've been doing this for 25 years. Before that, I did it for 10 years part time. Uh, so it's uh, stay consistent. Don't panic uh, and find a way. And frankly, the reason people panic and jump from one thing to another, uh, and this is just brass tacks here, is that they're kind of broke and they go, well, this isn't working this year. I gave it a year. I got to find something else. Right. Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, I always say, number one, find something to bring some money in, mm. but it may not be what you want to do right now. Uh, so you have to have two things to start a business. You've got to have a foundation of income already coming in. Mm. Uh, do not quit your day job. Uh, so uh, a lot of people do that and get themselves in a big financial mess. Keep your day job. And then if you have to work evenings and weekends, building your uh, your real dream, your real passion. But uh, all those things, uh, re- I, in fact, I'm going to recommend a book that will help people. Uh, probably the best book starter book for business is called Four Hour Work Week by Timothy Ferris, I believe. Yep, New York Times yep. best. So that's probably the most nuts and bolts easy to read bottom shelf book you can find on business. Uh, that's where you start that book. Um, so uh, that's a good one if you're looking to start. But I plot all those business books. I don't read a whole lot of business books. I just read the same ones over and over and over. Um, that one I've read many times. The other one is, can't remember the guy's name, but it's Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Mm-hmm. T. Uh, Harbecker. T. Harbecker. I've read that in probably 20, 25 times. Uh, so, uh, and then I apply the principles of those. So that's uh, a good way to do it. So uh, basic business principles is what I did to apply with my business. Uh, find what you're really good at, uh, and then uh, find a way to market that. So I don't know if that answers wow. your question. Wow. So what's next? We always end with what's next. Well, we'll let's talk about uh, how we are now connected. We haven't yeah. addressed that uh, mm-hmm. in a, in, involved in a dating relationship here. But uh, God has uniquely wired us uh, to work in ministry and business together uh, because she's great at what she does. And I looked at her website and her her um, uh, her social media posts. And I said, eh, it's, it's okay. It can be a lot better. Uh, so she didn't have time for that. Well, I'm good at branding. I said, we need to kind of rebrand, tweak your branding a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, bad branding can't make or break a business. 
but don't want to take a bad take that back. <laughs> bad branding can hurt your business, but generally it doesn't. But it's not it's not going to help you. Right. So I said eh, it's not hurting you really, but uh, it's not helping you either. Right. So we're rebranding right. her website, uh, rebranding uh, the look on the website, and her approach to uh, bringing funds in for the mm. ministry. She has good support, but I'm going. Yep, it's financial support. It can be a lot better right. with the right branding. I also have done this for 20, 25 right. years. I've done raised funds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars for Christian radio stations on the air. So I know a thing or two about fundraising. Sure. So I'm taking that and, uh, and just giving her great ministry the best shot, the best chance mm-hmm. it can it can do. It's doing well, uh, but it can do anything good can be made far better. Absolutely. And that's what we're working on. Yeah. She's got that's this. Awesome. She's the ministry. It's a one person ministry. Mm-hmm. She does a bang up job. So I want to give her, uh, put more gas in her team to get her to go. And I pray for him, literally. Mm -hmm. In my journal, I ask God, please send me someone that can help me with that part of it. Because I didn't, I just go out and do my thing. I go, I don't know how to do websites. I don't know how to do branding. And I I wrote that all over my journal. Send me someone. Come alongside me. She said, God, give me somebody to market. Somebody looks like Tom Cruise. (laughs) Uh, I made made that part up. (laughs) So uh, so we work together. I love doing that. I also am not called to the elderly, but uh, I do follow what God wants me to do. And God uh, told me to help my friend Kay Owen Larson, a mutual friend of ours mm-hmm. with her ministry to the elderly. So you don't have to be particularly called right. to a certain area, but there's a whole lot to be said for enabling other people to do their ministry. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm not called to the elderly, yeah. period. Yeah. I've prayed about it a lot since I met her, not there. Yeah. However, I can say this is going to sound highly unusual, but this happened one morning. I remember I was in my office. Uh, I felt like God said, uh, she's part of your calling, her, mm. her ministry. I went, oh, I'm not called to the elderly. I am called called, called to her yeah. in a powerful way. Love that. Love that. Try that for a dating line. I like that. <laughs> hey, look, uh, sweetheart. Uh, called I'm called, God called me to you. Right. Yeah. See, how, right. see how that does. <laughs> <laughs> it worked here enough we were already dating by the time i said that so um guys i i hope you really adhered to some of the messages that were being sent tonight that sent today and i and i hope that you you listen um with your heart as well as your ears and more importantly i hope you look in and go what does this mean for me Does it mean that I just am called to other people to do that? Maybe we financially support them. Maybe we could go with them. Maybe maybe we don't do it all the time. What does that look like for you? What is the? I always ask the question. What does that mean to you? And um, and then and the the last part of this is, what are you going to do with it? Is it just going to be something? Another thing that you've heard? Um, Another thing that you've gone? Okay, well that's good good information. Or is it going to be something that you go, man, I, I need to step up. I need to play a bigger game. I need to participate. I need to, um, I need to do what she's doing in a bigger, in a bigger way, in a bigger area, in a different field. Um, maybe even that it doesn't have to be the same thing, but I hope that as you listen to her heart and to Rick's heart, that you and I will take that and say, what does that mean for us? And then what can we do with that? Um, I think when we when we leave conversations like this and ask the right question, it's always amazing how the right answer shows up. But we have to ask the right questions. So, thank you guys for being here. Um, and uh, guys, where do they? Where do you want them to follow you? Oh, this is unusual. We're rebuilding our website, so we're not going to give you the website. Uh, we will later. In this way, if you can contact Bob, he and I are in contact all the time. Yeah. So contact Bob if you want to be able to be in contact with Lori. Uh, and we'll get your contact information, no marketing or anything like that. And then later on, when we want, we'll launch the website officially in about a month, we'll go ahead and uh, send you the link to the website. Awesome. Uh, so, and just uh, follow up, just two points I want to make here. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I, if you want to reach somebody's life, if I were to say there's a starving child in Africa, good luck trying to find somebody who knows a starving child in Africa. However, uh, her ministry is uh, bottom shelf. There are elderly people all over the place. Mm-hmm. So you want to really make an impact in somebody's life at a timely uh, time in their life. Uh, you know somebody that is elderly. Can you just find one person, uh, one elderly person 
adopt them right. yeah. uh, and just start visiting see. them. She's doing the big picture. She visits more senior homes than anybody I know of on the, on the planet, probably. Hmm. Um, so I thought she's the Mother Teresa of senior homes. Well, that's her ministry. It's what she's called to do. Maybe you can't do that. Probably can't. Uh, but I'm not even called to do that specifically. But you can find one person who's elderly mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to make a difference in their life. So if mm -hmm. you do that, then she's accomplished something a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the second point was about the website. Awesome. Uh, just uh, I know you may, may be wondering, you want to contact her. Uh, and she does receive funds for her ministry. We can pass it on to Absolutely. you. Uh, contact Bob. But we also, uh, for us, we have a Facebook page called The Rick and Lori Story. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. The, she... the Rick and Lori Story Facebook page. You want to follow our awesome our sure. journey and see where it's going to go. People started asking. We're, we're a little older, uh, but we have some standards in our dating life that fascinate people. They go, how do you guys do this? Yeah. Uh, we've chosen, this is a blunt personal thing here. We've chosen in this dating relationship, uh, we're not going to be sexually involved. And it's just a, a lot of biblical reasons and common sense reasons for that. So we can focus on our business, focus on our ministry, not get the relationship too complex. So you can follow that on the Rick and Lori story about how we go about that unusual dating arrangement this day and age. Rick and Lori story. The Rick and Lori story. Okay, yeah. there you go. Um, so Flo, I see you on there. You want to have a, a question or a comment? And Mike will call on you as well. Question or comment? And then other people are on Facebook, but we can't, we're not going to be able to get to them. Uh, I don't know if Mike wants to come on as well. And we okay. can do Mike, you can bring yourself on if you want. But go ahead, Phil. Uh, I just wanted to say, bless you guys for doing what you're doing. Um, really no comment. I just love what you're doing. Um, I know um, I went through it with my mom three, you know, three years ago. Uh, they are lonely. Um, and I was fortunate to be here and our family was fortunate to be here with my mom. Uh, but the priest that came said uh, he would give last rites and there was no one there. And some, he would just be walking through the hospital and they would be grabbing him saying, can you just please talk to me? So oh, right. bless you for doing that. Um, wow. So that's all, that's all for me. Aww. Thanks for sharing, Flo. Hey, Mike, how you doing, brother? Fantastic. Hello, Mike. How, how are you doing? Good. So how did the, um, how do you, how do you find the time of taking slow to balance your personal and your work life and your ministry? How do you bring all that together so you don't get distracted in one area over the other? Is that for me? Yes. I retired. So my ministry is now my job. It, I actually did both at the same time, and I was working from 6 a.m. to midnight. Nonstop. Nonstop, but I needed that at the time because I was grieving, but um, yeah, that's all I do now is just that ministry. That was my prayer to God that I could find a way to do it full-time without having to uh, be doing both at the same time, and he made a way, and, and awesome. I love traveling, so it's like it's fun for me, too. Awesome. Thank you both. It was a wonderful message today. I meant Thank a lot you. to me. Thank you, Mike. Mike is an incredible, incredible guy that I've gotten to know over the last six months or so. And um, we met online. We've never met in person. He lives in, in Texas. Oh. And um, I just have a lot of respect for him because he's, he's very vulnerable. He shares what's going on in his life. He's gone, going through a divorce. He's, you know, custody, you know, all that stuff that goes along with that. And, um, you know, his business, trying to ramp back up his business after all kinds of turmoil. And yet he's just this guy that is um, just a good man. Hmm. And um, his desire for his kids to be even better. And for it's just, he's just a really good, solid man. And hmm. so I, I just love this guy. Wow. Thank you both. Yeah, I randomly got a phone call. I'm, I work my business and I'm helping a friend and he called and was like, uh, I don't know why, but I'm giving you a $200 raise uh, this starting this week. Like, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. He's like, he's like, I can see what you're doing for the company. I want to keep blessing you and keep giving more money. He's like, oh. okay, I, I will. That's I missed a little bit of the story, but I was like, okay, I guess that's, I'm just going to follow what God wants me to do and just keep oh. showing up. And um, 
I find being angry doesn't get me anywhere. Just <laughs> but loving people gives me more opportunities to connect. Amen. Anger repels. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Thank you for sharing, for sharing your story. Absolutely. Thank you. So, guys, get out there, make it a great week, and enjoy your next level. You've been listening to Your Next Level Now with Bob Donnell. To find out more, call us at 949-542-6398. That's 949-542-6398. Or you can find more information on our website at everythingnextlevel.com. That's everythingnextlevel.com.